This tutorial is for 5th grade, Module 3, Lesson 9b. In this lesson, we're going to add fractions with unlike denominators. We're going to think about our fraction models that we used in the previous lesson, but we're only going to show the multiplication portion that that model represents. Here's what I mean by this. If I'm adding 3 fourths to 1 seventh, I need like denominators. What we did in the past was we would draw a model showing 3 fourths. Then we would draw our sevenths on top of that 3 fourths model. When we did that, we multiplied both the numerator and the denominator by sevenths. This occurred when we drew the sevenths on top of the fourths. So instead of having three pieces out of the four shaded, we had 21 pieces shaded. And instead of having four pieces that made up the whole, we had 28 pieces that made up the whole. Again, this happened because we drew our sevenths on top of the three fourths. Then if we look at our one seventh, when we drew that model, we then drew our fourths on top of the sevenths. So now instead of having one seventh, I have four times as many pieces shaded and four times as many pieces that make up the whole. Instead of having one piece shaded, I now have four smaller pieces shaded. And instead of having sevenths that make up the whole, I now have twenty-eighths that make up the whole. Now my addition problem is twenty-one twenty-eighths plus four twenty-eighths, which equals twenty-five twenty-eighths. Let's look at another example. Here I have one fourth plus nine eighths. So if I have one fourth, when I draw my fraction model, I would draw one piece shaded out of the four pieces. I would then draw my eighths on top of the model, and that means instead of having one piece shaded, I now have eight pieces that are shaded. Instead of having four pieces that make up the whole, I have 32 pieces that make up the whole. Now to change our 9 eighths, we would have started by drawing 9 eighths on the fraction model, and then we would draw our fourths on top of the eighths. That means instead of having 9 pieces shaded, I have 4 times as many. So I have 36 pieces shaded. And instead of having eight pieces that make up the whole, I now have 32 pieces that make up the whole. Now I can add my fraction. One fourth plus nine eighths is now the same as eight thirty seconds plus thirty six thirty seconds, which equals forty four thirty seconds. I can change this answer into a mixed numeral. If it takes 32 to make a whole, I can take 32, 30 seconds to equal one whole, and that leaves me with 12, 30 seconds. So my final answer is 1 and 12, 30 seconds. A student with good number sense might attack that same problem a different way. They might notice from the start that if you're working with fourths and eighths, that you could easily turn those fourths into eighths. If I have one fourth and I multiply my numerator and my denominator by two, that will give me two eighths. Now I only need to change that first fraction to have like denominators. So now I can look at the problem as 9 eighths plus 2 eighths, which is 11 eighths. That can be broken into 8 eighths and 3 eighths. The 8 eighths is my answer of 1, and then I have 3 eighths left over. So if they can see that from the start, 
that they could only change one fraction and create like denominators with the second fraction, then they should be allowed to use that strategy to cut down on some of those other steps and to keep the numbers a little bit smaller than changing both numbers to 30 seconds. Just another strategy that some students might be comfortable using, again, if they have good number sense.